welcome back. This is Boys and Ghouls Film Review, folks. I'm your host, Sarah Stevenson. This is my co-host, Mike Stevenson. Hi, guys. So, we're back again with another re- 80s classic, with, or cult classic, I should well, say. Well, cult classic, I'd say. Yeah, pretty close. Yeah. Which is called The Prowler. And this was another 80s-related slasher horror movie that has either gained or not <laughs> favour for fans, but also loses its <laughs> favourability with film critics. I think it's been unfairly judged. How's that? Hey, hey, pretty good? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. However. I mean, as I said before, during the 80s, there were a lot of slasher movies done by independent guys. Mm-hmm. Some of them went directly to theatres in your local neighbourhood. Some went to Some tape. went to tape, and others just... Um, died on up. Died no. on, well, hey. well, they just... Um, they didn't gain enough favour, even though it's not their fault. Exactly. Hmm. Anyway, here we go. Um, what have we got? Uh, yeah, 1981 uh, slash film, The Prowler. Um, produced by uh, Fred Smith. No. Uh, uh, Joseph Zito and David Street, S-T-R-E-I-T. Uh, directed by Joseph Zito. He, goes, he gets around. Hmm. Screenplay by Neil Barbara. Hmm. Barbera? I wonder if it's about Hannah Barbera people. Uh, Glenn Leopold. Mm. So, yeah, that's the main people. Now, a couple mm. of stars, yeah. I, I literally good fun to get through, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know. Do, 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 do. Got a whole lot of this here. Where do I finish? Uh, Vicky Dawson plays Pam McDonald. Christopher Guffman plays Jeopardy Mark London. He's a really nice guy, yeah. Uh, Lawrence Tenney plays Major Chatham. Farley Granger plays Sheriff George Fraser. Mm-hmm. Interesting character. Mm. Cindy Weintrobe, I think her name is, it plays Lisa. Mm-hmm. Lisa Dunsheath plays Sherry. David Setterholm plays Carl. And I won't go back down through the list too much because there's the you know, hotel clerk and everything. So. Mm-hmm. I'll leave it at that. Um, but yeah, um, interesting group of people. Um, now, budget was only about was well, was supposed to be under a mil uh, when it was originally reported in the tabloids and whatever. But uh, it was confirmed later on they spent up to about a million dollars to make this, but only box office about a million dollars. Mm-hmm. So you know, it didn't go really, really good. But it probably picked up stuff on home media. Yeah, and I think um, this might be another Tom Savini. Make, yeah, Tom uh, was makeup there. job. Yeah, yeah. You know, he did good, I think. The prosthetics. Usually. So, <laughs> anyway, the movie is pretty much centers around uh, a killer, a stalker, who goes out of his way to kill, you know, people who are, who are having a good time. It takes, and it's because of, um, I think the killer had a bit of an issue. He was a war soldier back he in the day. He got a dear John letter. And he How got a dear John letter that says, Sorry, dear, I'm, I'm not longer in love with you, therefore... I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to yeah. wait for yeah. you. Yeah. So Little cow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we then cross over to sort of a, a, um, a prom or dance later where they're just... Her and her latest fling, her new guy, are going just to, you know, get have Can a bit I of fun. Can I give a few dates and so they get an idea of your perspectives here? Sure. Now, okay. In March 1944, okay, a woman named Rosemary writes a letter to her boyfriend breaking up with him. Uh-huh. Bitch. Now, yeah. in June 1945, Rosemary is attending a graduation dance with her new boyfriend, Roy... Uh, who suggests to go to Lover's Lane, and you know what happens then. Yeah, yada, yada, yeah, they go to yeah. a, a nice little spot, and when they're about to get their tongues wet, <laughs> the, um, someone is prowling them, and he's wearing a, an he's army... Wearing full army uniform. Full army yeah, uniform. Battle, b- battle gear, and uh, he's he got a... Um, not, not a balaclava over his face, but yeah, you can't see him. You, know, you want to yeah, yeah, protect your face for, yeah. from being um, identified. Yeah. yeah, and then we cross over to, say, how many years? Um, I know this is well, back Well, it started off, and then it was, that was 1945, then it jumps forward to 1980. Yes. Yeah, about about, about uh, 35 years later. And the college or university are just doing their, they're going to do their 
latest their prom a, or dance or whatever graduation dance and this is the probably first the one first the one since, since the incident incident so 35 years ago was the last one yeah. now had a bit of a break and again do it happened to do another one yeah. yeah there was a bit of disputes about this and other than that there's also been a reports of a prowler in the area and of course um the police are on alert. The sheriff is informed. Yes. Of course, at this present time, the sheriff is going on a bit of a fishing well, yeah, trip. Yes, he says, I think it's coming at the beginning of summer. He goes to his fishing trip this time of year, so he left everything in charge of the deputy. Ah, shot the sheriff. Yeah. Uh, this is um, Major. That's the name of the kid, the guy. He, he And his girlfriend is, her name is... Um, Let's see, what's her name? Is, um, no. Her name is Vicky. Oh. And they're so much in love. And, of course, she hopes to see him at the dance, obviously. Well, yeah. And her friends are getting themselves organised. She wears this beautiful um, whitey, white pretty, pretty dress, obviously. But when she gets to prom, she's pouring out wa- um, punch. punch. And she sees Major hitting off with... What are you an, Major an, for? Well, that's his name. His well, name... not... Deputy is Deputy Mark London. Okay, Deputy Mark. Okay. Major? Sorry, Major man. Chatham is the old fart oh, next door in a wheelchair. Oh, my bad. <laughs> oh, sorry, guys, <laughs> for the misunderstanding. So, I oh, just didn't read my notes properly. So, anyway, Mark gets approached by one of the girls. I think it's either... Yeah, one of the players. I think it was Lisa. Yeah, I think her she's name a player, is. Probably. And yeah. her other friend, who's her roommate, I guess, is upstairs getting herself... Showered. Having a shower. Shaved. And then her boyfriend comes, named Kyle, I think his name is. And we then get the first kill in the movie where he goes into the... Sh- to kills him. And then he goes and kills her. And then we actually, later on, um, her friend, her... I mean, Vicky goes to her room because her dress got covered in punch. Yeah, so she went back to get chained. Yeah. Of course, she assumes that that her friend, um, her shower. Sherry, is still in the um, showers. And, and, that, and that, I made a comment at this point. So she'd gone out, she was in the shower. She went out to the prom, was there for like 20 minutes or so, whatever, came back, she's still in the shower. Sounds like my other daughter. Mm. And uh, <laughs> it's Yeah, an anyway, <laughs> so it doesn't make sense at this point. But anyway, she picks yeah. up a blue... Sort a nice of a, a simple blue dress, yeah. which along is with nice enough, but not as good as the first one. Not as good as the first one. A bit annoyed, and but she gets, um, she eventually heads out again, and not noticing the dead bodies in the in the shower. Obviously, well, she didn't go in the room, you see. So. Yeah. Right. Anyway, she then heads off, and as she's heading off, she gets stalked by our stalker, a prowler, obviously, Mr. and he's wearing Mr. the Stalker, same outfit. Yeah. He's wearing, I should mention, um, our killer signature is a mm-hmm. rose. Yeah, the, he, 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 when he kills some, some of these girls, he leaves a red rose. Uh, the red rose killer. Indicating <laughs> his first kill, Rosemary. Uh, yeah, Rosemary. Uh, so he said the thing about going back to Rosemary and her... Wasn't there something similar on a painting? She has carrot and she held, holding a rose. And mm-hmm. there was... When she signed a deed, John Letter, there was a rose written on the bot- bottom of where her signature was and different mm-hmm. things. And yeah. yeah, the rose is significant. Yeah, uh-huh. plays a key part to the story. I should mention the prowler in this movie, that in the in the in the opening, um, he was never up and handed, of course. Would you say, Mike? Well, That's what they I said. didn't know who did it. Yes, and yes. they suspect that maybe this might be the same prowler. Of course, Someone. later in the movie, mm. halfway through, we find out that the guys they suspect was arrested in another place. Yes. So Those. they had. This is a new. Prowler of sorts, yeah, the same so, one from back then. So it wasn't then. the one they mentioned in the beginning uh, uh, when a sheriff passed on the deputy. Don't worry about it. Yeah, that, anyway. that's not going to affect us too much. And yeah. he left. So yeah. So anyway, mm. Mark, um, he eventually finds Vicky, and she tells him about the, this unknown person. But he, of course, he goes searching for him, of course, but doesn't find anything. And um, they soon realize that it may be the same person. So they actually go to the major's place because he was actually, he, atta- well, he wouldn't, he's not, he didn't attack Vicky. He was more or less grabby. He grabbed her. Yes. And that's about as far as I went. Yeah. He eventually, they eventually go inside the ha- his house. This is um weird with this part because we don't see after this, 
this like that last scene with Major. We don't know. We don't see, we don't know, we don't see yeah. him again for the entire movie. With Major. Maybe, you know, yeah, anyway, man, they go inside the house and they find um, um, Ro- a, a picture of Rosemary and some pi- and s- some flat and a rose and some other stuff there, like pictures and stuff. You start thinking, okay, mm. is he really a cripple? No. Mm-hmm. Ah. I should mention Lisa is next killed. The gar- girl that was pr- kind of drunk and was. Pr- uh, flirting with Mark earlier. Yeah, obviously, she in went the for a, river, a dip in the pool in her bra and panties. She gets it killed, very nice. and <laughs> they warn the other uh, prowler in the area and tell the the te- oh, head teacher or tells everyone to stay inside yeah, where they're having yeah. the function. Of course, um, she finds left. out that Lisa's not as left, so she goes down to. To the pool. To the pool, and there um, she gets killed eventually. Oh well, yes, he finds. Uh, Traces yeah. of uh, what's he who's blood in the mm-hmm. pool, and then she starts to run away, and she, yeah, she gets killed by this naughty man. Yeah, a bunch of other kids do sneak off for a bit of um, in the ba- to the basement, and they get sort of watched by an un- by one of the shop owners who's in the area, obviously. Yeah, there's um, two he's strange shop owner type guys there. Yeah. yeah. And they even tried to ask him, because he's very weird, that they even phone in and ask him, has he been out, and is he home or is he around? And they say, um, no, he's not around. He, well, actually, he kind of falsely pretended that he was heading out, but then he just gets on the phone saying, no, he's not there, when he didn't even bother actually really checking the idiot, when you think about it. Whatever. Yeah. Anyway, so... Moving on, the uh, they go to Mark and Vicky. They go to the cemetery to find Vicky's, I mean Rosemary's body, and there they find more than the bargain for. They find the name of Rosemary has been etched out on a, a on a gravestone, and the wasn't the body uh, exhumed by somebody. Yeah, they yeah. open the they open the casket, and there they find. Somebody else's body. It was Lisa. I yeah, mean, yeah. either Le- yeah, Lisa's yeah, body the one in there. Swimming pool girl. And yeah. the um, we also notice on the gravestone the rose. You know, the rose signet that we saw in, again, in the old this movie. rose. Yeah. Yes, they hey. realise that maybe the major may have a hand in it, even though he's confined to a wheelchair. Well, yeah, we think he's. Par- there is, I think he might be p- pretending. Uh, yeah, probably um, traumatized by the experience of his daughter's. Pending death from years ago, obviously. Mm, somewhat. Anyway, um, he, they head back to the major's house, and there they go through the place. And of course, at first, Mark tells her, "Why don't you go back to the dance and stay there with everyone else?" But she doesn't want to go. She wants to Be see this with, through. Yeah, safe with the policeman, or well, sheriff, oh, yeah, deputy. Yeah. Well, deputy, yeah. and uh, he eventually. will be the sheriff soon. Man. Oh, yeah. Anyway, they soon arrive there, but we don't see the major anywhere, obviously. Yeah. And they explore the place, and then we see Mark knocked out. Then we get to see a chase scene with um, Vicky and the the, um, the uh, stalker, or prowler, anyway. And she gets the upper hand a couple of times, even hit herself, you know, when in one of the, one of the rooms, obviously, when he's where it's covered in... Blankets and sheets and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, dust covers. Yeah, dust yeah, covers. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you don't use rooms, you put the old sheets over things and keep yeah. the dust off the furniture and the oddments. Yes. Yeah. Eventually, they had he, she, um, about when she was about to kill him, obviously. Uh, eventually, the um guy appears and um, uh, uh, the shop guy obviously appears and shoots him and it didn't do a double tap. Pretty no, he should have. Yeah. Even if it's not a zombie, it's always worth a, worth a second shot. You know, just in case. Then suddenly the killer arises and he takes out his own gun. And this is the first time I've ever seen a slasher killer take out a gun, to be honest. Anyway, and he shoots the man, obviously, killing him. And then he's about to take kill the, um, g- the um, girl, but luckily enough, she struggles with the gun and we see that he removes his his mask or his whatever his outfit obviously and we see it's the sheriff i know what you're thinking i am shot the sheriff but i did, I did not, not shoot, shoot the, the deputy, deputy. <laughs> anyway she struggles with the gun and she places it under his chin anyway it goes you know Boom! and he lost his head no. yeah okay. and then we sh- we sort of 
fade into the next morning where we see we'll them see um, being approached by the local police and or more the police. And the and yeah. And stuff and yeah. yeah, Mark approaches the local police while um, Vicky goes upstairs where she continues to hear the trickle-trickle water of the shower. There she heads Their inside the shower. Their water must be horrendous. Hey? Oh yeah, yeah right. it's been all. It's all been night? No, yeah. No, she goes into the shower and sees the dead bodies of Sherry and and, and Kyle, and we see Kyle in a sort of zombie state, grabs for her, and, but we realize this is all in a her dream. Imagination, yes. And then we fade out, and then the credits roll. It was a nice, fun movie. I a, thought it was I've cool. seen a lot worse, and, uh, and which have made a lot more money. So I yeah. don't know why I didn't. Maybe there's too many things going on at the yeah. theatre at that well, time. You when know, you have yeah. so many slashes going on, yeah. guys, it makes it hard to figure out which one's the yeah. best. And not to mention, as I said before, in the past, when you have so many s- movies of the same theme going on, it makes it difficult to actually watch any of them because you then think, oh, this is just going to be another. You know, same old, same old, you know, blood, gore, and superhero stuff like that. And you begin to wonder, they're just giving us the same stuff over and over, and what's the point in watching a movie anymore? Anyway, mm. so go into it. Um, Dan, what's the reception part like? Well, I'm going to go into the reception straight away. I'm going to a bit of a... I don't always do the background information stuff, because I don't always have a lot to play with. Mm-hmm. So, uh, now... I was right. The Prowler was co-written by Glenn Leopold and Neil Barbera, son of Joseph Barbera. Yeah, Hannah Barbera uh, cartoons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Amazing. He, he had a, a finger in the pie. So I was Ooh. right there. Uh, Brilliant. Now, that was reasonably interesting. Uh, da, 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 da. Now, I'll just go down here. Um, now, yeah, the, the filming, uh, they wanted to shoot, shoot the... Um, the movie at a place called Avalon in California. You local people in California know where this. I've got no idea. Mm-hmm. In the same area it was supposed to be set in. But he later decided to shoot the film at uh, Cape May, New Jersey, because it had a bit of a more of a ghosty, sinister sort of feel. So, uh, yeah, and the, the, uh, the shoot took about six weeks, working six days a week. So they, they had a pretty intensive shoot mm-hmm. over a short period of time. Uh, yeah, so about 36 days. Um, back in that, back, newspaper reports said I was being about 400 to 500 thou, but Zito said it started, it started to be more like $1 million to produce the film. Mm. And like I said before, um, it was going to be uh, one of those movies, that I think, I'm good or bad, but they put a million bucks in it, and they lucky they broke even at the theatre. And um, yeah. So maybe they uh, made a lot more on home media. Anyway. Mm, might. Uh, the inn at Cape May served as a building that appears in the dance sequences. So, again, you guys in America probably know that a bit better than me. Um, mm. While Emlyn Physic Estate uh, served as Chatham House, mm-hmm. where the film's last act takes place. There mm-hmm. you go. Right. Uh, now here, special effects. Tom Savini. Yeah. Hurrah. Now, this is interesting. He designed special effects for the film's elaborate murder sequences. Because of the film's death sequences were so special effects intensive, the shooting schedule was crafted to prioritise the filming of those specifically. Mm. If whole days dedicated to one death sequence, so they can get it just right for you gore hounds out there. Okay? Well, as I said before, those particular scenes they do take a lot of planning as a filmmaker myself I I mean I felt the same way when I did Prom Queen I had to plan around doing yeah. those scenes and try to mm. make sure but it's plan all around the, it's the done good effects, so yeah. mm. but here it's now censorship this is a, I don't often go into this but this is quite funny this okay, okay The Prowler was released under the alternate name the title Rosemary's Killer oh uh, at, oh, Rosemary's Killer in Australia yeah. and Europe mm. uh, in a cut that excises most of Tom Savini's gore effect. That's the best bit. The German version omits all of the gore scenes, including the re- revelation of the killer's identity. What was left? And it replaced the soundtrack, it goes out, 
with bird sounds for daytime and cricket sounds for the night scenes. I wonder I heard weird uh, bird no, sounds no, in this one. No, in the cu- in the German version. Okay, okay, German version. You wouldn't have heard unless we do. Do we watch a German version? I was doing subtitles. I think not. Um, mm, um, idiots. So um, yeah um, and a version and that version goes by. The fork day toads or whatever, which is translated the pitchfork of death. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, it's so yeah, they stripped it well, down. Well he did so, wear a sort of he no, did yeah, use a pitchfork yeah, the in point. this thing. They they trashed the movie in all the recuts. So when we get on to where do you get it, make sure you get the right one. Do not get Rosemary's Killer. Do not get Die Fork just toads um, that one because that's going to be cut the crap house. Um, so you're going to go for The Prowler and 1981 film. Okay, right. okay. now remember that. One. I'll re- reinforce that later. Right. Um, now, Encyclopedia of Horror in 1986 reports that Savini's particularly graphic special effects resulted in most of the murders being trimmed in the British release print. Of course, they're too graphic. Ah. I don't think they're that graphic, but for their time, I'd say, yeah, probably. I think the they'll, head they'll exploding the ba- would be cool. They're pushing the boundaries then. Yeah, so yeah. Pretty damn good. Tom Savini's always been good when it comes to doing stuff. So. Hey, a head exploding is good in my book, mm. in yeah, my head exploding opinion. Exploding heads and stuff and things and spears through mouths and, yeah, and pitchforks through chest. Yeah, really good stuff. Close-up work, you know? Mm-hmm. I won't go through the critical response because it all jump jumbled a bit here. Um, so pretty much, um, it was. Uh, how do you put it? They they weren't overly fond of the movie. Most mm. of them, they I mean, didn't say it was bad or horrible, but mm. they said, well, you know, yeah, mm. yeah. They they didn't. They, they're lukewarm on it, really. Um, there's nothing much to say about the reception in that regard. Um, yeah, so it's... I'm not going to go through all the crap, but it's, it's all jumbled together here. Hmm. But, yeah, yeah, it's a typical... Um, all movie called it a run-of-the-mill entry in the early 80s slasher film cycle that benefits from an unexpected amount of technical gloss but has little else to offer. Oh, come on, so there's a story in it, and they put a few dead bodies around it. It always helps. You know, and, and it's a good special effects, obviously. Hmm. Anyway, okay, what else? Blah, 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 blah. I can't think of anything else to talk about because it's a, it is what it is. It's a nice, friendly little piece to sit down on a what, what nice dark night with the wind howling and oh. you know, storm outside. No, whatever. Ooh. And listen to it you know, and uh, have a hot chockey mm. or, or a bourbon. Um, I like a bourbon. And What's have a sit difference? down or two, and sit down there and chill in front of the telly and have a good, uh, a good um, watch. Watch, yeah. Anyway. I don't understand why some people would just pick a t- part of a movie oh, and look, not it, even it, find it, anything interesting about it. Well, look, it's like a, what's the movie we did the other day? Um, uh, that Mueller. would be the Mutilator. Mueller. Now look, I thought that was a good watch. I didn't. Th- I liked the first movie better than the second movie. I think the second movie was a little bit too lighthearted for me, but it was still a good movie. Uh, but they had good basic storyline and some nice kills in it. It wasn't, to me, an A-grade movie. This isn't an A-grade movie necessarily, but it's a fa- yeah, it's a fine film to watch if you know it's, you're not expecting uh, George Lucas or Steve, Steven Spielberg to pop out of the corner, you know? And, mm. um, yeah, so it's, yeah. Everybody has these ideas of grandeur. It must meet this criteria, otherwise it's crap. Well, I'm sorry... There's a lot of movies being made out of the years that have been pretty average, have actually been very popular. Yeah. Because people actually like them. That's so why they become yeah. cult classics Some to this do, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people buy the merchandise, buy the DVDs. Yeah, the coffee cup, the tea towels, the T-shirts. Stuff yeah, like caps, that. You know, and stuff. the action figures, considering they do have slasher action figures out there. I've seen a Michael Myers. I've seen Freddie... Uh, yeah. uh, 
Kruger, and they've seen Jason Voorhees around. Yeah, they've actually got, you know, you know they got that, that cat that, uh, you know, who wears, you know, mm. make America great again. They should make one, make horror great again, or make slashes great again, hey? Mm. And, and everybody can wear one, you know? Well, yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They had one where they were called Making Footy Great Again. Footy is a football. Yeah, I'd rather have a horror movie or something. Oh. Anyway, um... You going to write it now? It's going to be a shorter yeah, one than usual. Seeing as this um, will be a short one as usual. Not much I'll to talk t- about, really, mm. this one. Yeah, so I'm going to rate it uh, 10 out of 10 because I like Tom Savini's gory kills. good work. And mm. I like the storyline because it indicates that there's a pa- the kill has a past and he, why he repeats it. Even and though we don't... I think that he was so uh, me- mentally um, damaged up here. He probably thought... He, that he's really living the past. He and was, yeah. he's, he's Graduation just, night yeah. again. Yes. Yeah. But he, that was a funny thing because we, what the, um, we watched The Mutilator and reviewed it last time mm. and we knew who the killer was all the way through the, sec, uh, the first and second movie. We knew who it was going to be. Yeah. So there wasn't any shocks. At least this one, you didn't know who the killer was until the end. That's what I like most, guys. So yeah, a bit of suspense would be really nice. Suspense. Doesn't go astray. And yeah. I love yeah. the twist ending in this one where yeah. the dead bodies of the first kill, to, yeah, he, you know, were found much later. Yeah. Instead of, oh, we just found them in our room and, Don't ooh, hang on, hang scream, the uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, the usual stuff. Yeah. And... I like that because, and I like the fact that in the end, she, he grabs her like in a zombie kind of way, and it's all Ooh. an illusion or a, a well, hallucination. hallucination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought that's a great twist, yeah. and you don't have it anymore yeah. because um, that particular type of twist is yeah. kind of well, not really. I mean, there are some mo- some new mo- new modern movies where they would try to put over the twist that will audiences will love obviously yeah. no, it, and it's <laughs> it's an ongoing thing where you have to make sure your audiences are you know I taken mean, in by the story if you're going to do a drama that's different it's telling a story once upon a time it's three bears we're going to follow a killer you're going to study stuff that's okay not a problem when you do a, a slasher movie a suspense thriller it's always good to keep the cards up the sleeve and deal them out later and say oh didn't see that one coming you yeah. know uh, and yeah, it makes it a bit more suspenseful and interesting. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Now, having said all that, mm-hmm. um, I can't find anything majorly wrong with the film. Yeah, I have no issues with it, and I no. like the fact that Tom Savini put so much work into the gore effects. I mean, I yeah. like, I like homemade gore because it's better yeah, than not, than CGI not gore. No, you, you mean? Real, uh, made up, yeah, like mm-hmm. by, by makeup art and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And instead of CGI, yeah, yeah, and prosthetics yeah. and yeah. props. Instead yeah. of just, uh, oh, we'll, we'll use CGI yeah, and yeah, get yeah. make it look good. Yeah. Make it good. That always looks good. It's not as good uh, as it can be a good tool in some cases, but some, not all the time. Yeah, but not all the time. Anyway, yeah, uh, here go we go. Um, I was going to say I won't necessarily give it a ten, but I might give it a nine because I mean I thought there was a something. They, they, I was hoping to see the dead. Uh, major in his wheelchair somewhere or something. He just, there he is, he grabbed the girl and that was the last time we saw him. So he was omitted from the story, unless it was cut out accidentally, I don't know, but I was expecting to see, oh, that's one red herring gone. So he hasn't grown legs and been able to move around and kill people, so who's next? But that could have been added in there for a bit of extra spice. But anyway, that's my reason why I'm giving it a nine. Mm. Now, where do you get it? Yeah, now, before question. I tell you where to get it, I tell you, be careful. Okay, firstly, this is a 1981 film called The Prowler. Yes. There is a 1951 film called The Prowler. Hmm. It's a film noir. Mm-hmm. I think Van Heflin's in it. It's not a bad movie. It is not the same story. It's just yeah. a different thing. Different Can, movie, yeah. same name. So, and also, wait yeah. a minute. Go on. In 2018, there's a movie called Prowler. Really? So make sure you don't leave the THG out when you go searching. And if you get the right year, 1981, you're going to do well. But mm-hmm. make sure you don't get a VHS or a laser disc or anything else. Okay. So long, make sure you get a DVD, plenty of DVDs. Mm-hmm. And having said that, eBay has got them for sale. 
yeah. Amazon Asset for Rent and for Sale. And if so, it's on 2B, that's yeah. fine too. What? If it's on TV, oh, no. that's fine If there's streaming services, yeah, go and look for it. But I, I don't go. I'm not going to check every streaming bloody service until well, that one's got it, and those guys have got it. And you can pay for it. That one, that one's a freebie. No, I'm not going to do all that. That's how they they, they can do the leg work. Now, uh, yeah, but the main ones there. If you want to buy it, rent it, whatever, it should be around another streaming services. So if you have a look around, your local friendly one, it could be on Netflix, it could be on Tubi, it could be on Shutter, it could be on lots of other good groovy places. So there you go. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I've covered all that. Be careful what you buy. You might okay. get it. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, I heard a joke the other day. I like this one. Okay. Okay. The, the two people were talking, and the first one says, uh, I just ordered a chicken and an egg on Amazon. Okay. All right? All right. And the second person said, why did you do that? And I said, I want to see which one comes first. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? Oh, I thought it was funny. Gee. So what came first, chicken or the egg? At Amazon. least that's a lot yeah. more better than what people often say in the quote, obviously. <laughs> so. Well, that's a joke, isn't it? It's pretty, it sounds interesting. Yeah. Anyway, so um, you know where to find it and you know our thoughts on it. So it's up to you guys, like, at, like usual, to watch it. Yeah. But actually, I, I will go one thing. Tom Savini, when he, when he applies his trade to a movie... Um, it's usually, the special effects are usually, I would say second to none. He's pretty damn good. So mm-hmm. if you want special effects for, for kills, it's yeah. a good movie. It looks good. Yeah, I've yeah, spoke yeah, to yeah. several filmmakers out there and and some of them said the same thing back to me, saying if there it was a choice between CGI and, you know, just um, using ordinary special effects like Tom, like Tom, Tom, Tom Savini, they would naturally choose Tom Savini's approach yeah. to instead of um, using CGI as an escape route. I mean, yeah, it's fun. It, look, it's 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 fun to look at it. It's, you say, oh yeah, that looks really gory, and you know it's not a computer. So you start to watch. actually. Who was it? What was the movie that they the guy went to jail for, or they put it? They went and took him to court because they thought it was real. Um, um, that would have been um, that would have been uh, Cannibal Holocaust. Yeah, Cannibal Hor- Hol- Holocaust. The 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 gra- the the makeup, special effects, everything else, the f- f- filmography, the whole lot. Everyone thought they were really killing the actors. Yeah. Now that's mm-hmm. what I call great special effects. Mm-hmm. The guy was actually taken off the court because I thought he killed all these people to make the movie. Yeah, and then they brought mm. the actors in and said, "Hello, I'm we're alive. we're alive." You I'm thought, waving you at think you. The prosecuting attorney would have done his homework first, but anyway. Or at least find the the next family members to see if they're alive. But these people that are alive, well, they they, they got better. He's pay, he paid his rent last week, so he must be alive. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, um, do you guys know we watched also History of Horror, so we kind of kept um, tabs on any types of horror out there, so. If we do see, run into some new, some old movies that you, that you have not seen yet, we'll be sure to add them to our list. We certainly will. And we, I think, re- oh, we, look, we like reviewing new and old because yeah. I mean, some old movies. Like, um, I said it before a couple, couple of years ago. We do new and old because young people today may well have missed some of the old classics. And when I want a classic, I'm not talking about the ones which are a bit A-grade movies like your Frankenstein's mm. and your Dracula's, which got who got rolled out and rolled out every Halloween. You get them all the time, but the, the other movies which mm-hmm. uh, which have dropped off into obscurity now, yeah. and people don't know they exist, yeah. but they're still alive and well and creeping people out. So yeah. that's why we do them. The person yeah. who's I guess one of the producers for History of Horror is done by none other than Eli Roth, the guy who did Cabin in the Woods oh. and that TV cartoon series called um, Fear, um, you know, Crew. Fear Crew, that's it. Oh, sorry, Fear Crew, yeah, Fear that. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of other movies, and including um, a Thanksgiving slasher that just came out last year, okay. too. Yeah, yeah. That I haven't, I might look at reviewing next time. We could do that. Yeah. Yes. I like to think there might be a sequel coming up for thanks the Thanksgiving movie soon, soon oh, too. Anyway. And 
I also have some other ones I'm looking into too that might interest you guys too. Anyway, like uh, I think I'm looking into the f- the Founders Day one that just came out this year, this month, obviously. Aha! Uh-huh. By the time this, um, ne- by the time February comes around, it's already um packed off and is ready distributing on DVD. I don't know. Well, again, yeah. anyway. Anyway, so you guys know where to find the ne- um the movie so be yeah, sure to go yeah, check yeah, it yeah, out make sure we don't pick up a VHS yeah or a laser disc or and looking, yeah. be sure to remember The Prowler guys The Prowler 1981 mm. actually I think the cover has got something like a guy in military uniform you know jungle stuff you know uh, camouflage gear his helmet and I think he's got yeah. a knife at the girl's throat or something or he's bayonet or something or other yeah. so it, it, that's the one yeah, 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 so yeah. you know where to find it. So be sure to check it out and let us know in the comments, like often, to let us know what you guys think of yeah. it. And let us know if there's any other movies you wish us to review. There's been quite a few people been con- contacting me about reviewing their next film project here and there. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So mm. I'll be sure to put, add their name to my list as much as I can. Uh, no promises. I, I will. This list might go on forever, to be honest. <laughs> so that's it from us, guys. This is Sarah Stevenson. And Michael. Saying see you guys around on Boys and Ghouls Room Review. So we'll see you guys next time on our channel. Bye for now. Bye, guys. <laughs>